You are watching a master at Hi guys, it's your fragrance expert Lupe from the Lupe Experience with a trio or trinity of fragrance reviews for you today. Today we have three fragrances from one of Killian Hennessy's newest collections in the Garden of Good and Evil. The ones we'll be reviewing today are going to be in the city of sin playing with the devil and good girl gone bad we will start off with in the city of sin now in the city of sin is what I would say is the most unisex of these three. It is a fruity fragrance, but it has a prominent spicy facet to it, a prominent dry incense facet to it. And so these, you know, really juxtapose and counterbalance the fruitiness of this fragrance and make sure that it's a fragrance that can be worn by men as well as by women. It starts off with lychee, black currant, uh, a wateriness to it, so it's not thick and syrupy. Uh, it has a lot of pink pepper, a lot of cardamom, which gives a green crackling spiciness to it, and it has incense, dry smoky incense notes as well. All these notes in the fragrance are well balanced against each other. None of them really screams above the other notes and they're very harmoniously and well blended together. In terms of, you know, how I would rate what it smells like, it's a pleasant smell, it's detectable, it's not overbearing. This would not annoy anyone or offend anyone, but at the same time, it is not a high impact fragrance. However, the positives abound. As I said, it smells good. It's a good smelling fragrance. It's well blended. The ingredients obviously are luxurious as Killian is always known to do, but it's just not a high impact fragrance. For me, I would rate it sort of like a meh. So if you're someone you know who's looking for something that's easy wearing, and you're willing to shell out the amount of money that this retails for, then, you know, this is something that you should definitely check out. But in terms of the entire in the Garden of Good and Evil collection, this is not the best in the collection. The best is yet to come. For playing with the devil, what we're going to get is we're going to get a fragrance that is prominently fruity. Mm. And the top notes of this are delicious. They're delectable, they're edible. That is the way I would describe it. I think those words describe this fragrance perfectly. It is not a gourmand or a gourmet, you know, a fragrance that evokes food, but it has a candy-like feel to it. It smells like fruit punch, and it's rich in blood oranges, in peaches, in apricot, in lychee, and it smells beautiful, like something that you would serve at a kid's barbecue. It's very sweet, very fruity, very, very juicy. The consistency or the density of this fragrance, I'd say it's moderate, so it's not syrupy and thick, Neither is it like or effervescent, which is quite good. It does stay its presence and it has that high impact that I so crave in fragrances. This is one that would be easy to fall in love with upon first sniff. Now, the downside of this fragrance, as rarely do we find perfection in life, is that this is a very dynamic fragrance. It changes quite drastically and the top notes are starkly different from the base notes. When this fragrance dries down, it really does change and it's no longer what it presented itself to be. 
as it dries down some of the incense notes in the base, benzoin or coconut and the spices come more to play. As a matter of fact, it is that the fruity notes die out, not the base notes coming up. And it loses a lot of its luster, it loses its liveliness, it loses its spark. That high impact that I love so much just dies down. It becomes a little flat and lifeless on the skin. Unfortunately, this is for the majority of the lifespan of this fragrance on your skin. So what you smell at the top is not truly what this fragrance is all about. And that's why I have mixed feelings and mixed ratings on this fragrance. Amazing top notes, boring, flat, lifeless, dry down. Um, it's not one that I'm sure I can live with in terms of wearing it as a signature scent or to occasions because just 20 minutes into wearing it, I would already miss those wonderful top notes. So there we have playing with the devil. Next up, we will move on to Good Girl Gone Bad. Good Girl Gone Bad. I mean, the name already tells you that this is a fragrance that's made for women. I mean, Killian makes his fragrances and the customer is supposed to decide, the user is supposed to decide whether it smells masculine or it smells feminine. But with a name like Good Girl Gone Bad, how much choice is left to the consumer, okay? And this one, is a floral, aquatic, watery fragrance. And of these three, this is the standout one in terms of composition, execution, performance, impact. However, it is traditionally feminine. We're talking about a lot of jasmine, neroli, orange blossom, aquatic accords, um, musk. The perfume behind this one is Alberto Morillas. And Alberto Morillas is the creator of Aqua de Gio. Aqua de Gio is the legendary aquatic fragrance, the fragrance that ushered in the aquatic phase of blue, summery, light, watery aquatic fragrances. And so whenever he makes fragrances, he does a good job of making sure that they have an aquatic feel to them. And with the level of ingredients that he's been blessed with to work on this fragrance, Good Girl Gone Bad, he's really created something spectacular. This fragrance has a very mass marketed feel to it. And what I mean by that is that this is the sort of smell that um, a lot of fragrances that are trying to sell you know, millions of copies go for. It's aquatic, it's light, it's watery, has florals as well. But the difference is the quality of the ingredients in this one, very sophisticated, finely blended, the authenticity of the notes, what they're supposed to smell like really comes through. There's no harshness or, or abrasiveness about it. Very smooth, true to life, realistic representation of, of notes and accords in this one. So this I give very, very high marks if you're a lady and you're looking for a great fragrance that's going to get you a lot of attention that you are going to enjoy wearing yourself. It's not going to be overbearing to you or overbearing to people around. And it lasts a very, very long time on the skin. So you get what you pay for with this fragrance. As a matter of fact, in this trio, this is the one that really stood out as the best for women when I did a lot of tests and asking a lot of people. My girlfriend has worn this. A couple of my female friends have worn this out on night out as I have people test fragrances before I review them. And everybody really likes this one. The downside is that it is sort of a quote unquote generic usual smell, something that you can smell in drugstores. But the upside is that the fragrances in drugstores, they just don't use the same sort of ingredients. This one smells rich, it smells luxurious and sophisticated. You smell this and you know that whoever is wearing it, you know, is sophisticated, classy, is confident, you know, and has really gone the extra mile, smell exquisite. So Good Girl Gone Bad is a, a spectacular fragrance and one that I would highly recommend uh, from this collection. 
Now, my overall thoughts on this collection is that it is uh, these three are very well done. They're not my personal favorites according to my tastes from this collection. My favorite is Forbidden Games, for which I have a review for as well. Um, however, Good Girl Gone Bad is the one that I find incredible. I, I did buy uh, a travel spray of that for my girlfriend. Um, Killian wanted to create a fruity, uh, floral, light collection. He did a good job of that. However, the downside of the entire collection is that the smells, they're not unusual. Um, and that is really what fragrance connoisseurs are expecting when they smell niche perfumes or when they're paying exorbitant amounts of, of prices for fragrance. They want to smell something that they feel like they cannot smell in department store. Something that's very unusual, something that's niche, something that's luxurious, something that's special. And these have usual smells. See, these are smells that we're comfortable with, that we know, that we've come to love. And, you know, it's a double-edged sword. I love these smells. I don't want to smell, you know, um, offensive to anyone. And I don't want to smell so unique that I don't smell good. And I think that's where a lot of people miss the point. You do want to smell unique, but you can smell so unique and you can smell so different that you actually stop smelling good. And these fragrances, they all smell good. Thank you for watching this review. I hope you enjoyed it. I would like to invite you to watch other reviews on the Lupe Experience and fragrance guys out there, fragrance ladies out there, I will see you soon. Smell well.